Because I had told him, if anything comes up, so he called me. I said, I'll, you know, I'll come down. Let me make sure I got this off. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh 
Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary's today as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. These are the announcements. Today our focus is on water, a symbol of our faith, which is one marks which is one which marks our entry into the church. We invite each family to take a bottle of holy water as you exit today. These are available by the baptismal font. Mark your calendars. St. Mary's is un will unveil their new virtual tour at 10 a.m. on Sunday, January 31st, from 12.15 to 2 p.m. That day, teachers and parents from all grade levels will be available to speak with prospective school families via Zoom chat rooms. 
Enrollment for the 2021-22 school year opens on February 1st for parish families. Boy Scout Troop 92 will be collecting cans and bottles after all masses this weekend. The redemption truck will be here in the front parking lot along Transit Road from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. on Saturday, from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Sunday. Just drive through on your way to or from Mass. All Scouts will wear masks and gloves in order to keep everyone safe. Make sure to purchase your Snow Me the Money raffle tickets by Friday, January 29th. Each $20 ticket gives you the opportunity to win cash prizes totaling $15,000, while at the same time supporting St. Mary's School. The drawing will take place live after 4 p.m. Mass on Saturday, January 30th. COVID restrictions are still in place. Please remember to sanitize your hands on the way in and out of church. Thank you for the, your cooperation. This Mass is being recorded and live streamed via YouTube. Please take a moment to sell, silence your cell phones. Our presider this morning is Father Jack Matamor. Please stand as the liturgy begins.
Almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the River Jordan 
And as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all of all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you shall not run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he, while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as the heavens, the rain and snow come down, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I was sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three that testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We had the sprinkling rite, there's holy water to take home. Because we remember not only the Lord's baptism on this great feast, we remember the fact and cling to it that each one of us has been baptized as well. We've either been immersed in water or sprinkled with water, as Jesus was in the Jordan. And of course, the question should occur to us, well, why was Jesus, who was true God and true man, Why was he baptized by John, who was calling people to repentance and to be baptized so that their sins could be wiped away, they could begin a new life? It's because Jesus was taking our place. He took the place of a sinner by humbling himself and going into the Jordan. And his father was so proud and so pleased that he spoke from the heavens You are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. 
And because of Jesus' baptism, because of our baptism, we too are beloved sons and daughters of God. The Lord is pleased with us. We are children of God through adoption, and that adoption took place when we were baptized. And so remember who your father is, and remember who your brother is, and that can help us, especially during these days, to know that God has this. God has me in his hands. And Jesus is right there with us as well. We're adopted children of God through baptism. Now Mark is amazing when he writes because he uses a word that twice in his Gospels. Once here in the first chapter, and he'll use it again in the 15th chapter. And the word, the Greek word, is schizo. And if you schizo something, you tear it apart. You rip it in half. You know, we have the word uh, schizophrenic when people suffering from mental illness, their personality has been ruptured. Well, it says in this translation, um, he saw the heavens being torn open. That's exactly what he saw. And then he saw the Spirit come down. And then he heard the voice of his Father. Well, if we were to look at Mark 15, at the crucifixion, the veil in the temple was torn apart, ripped in half. And on that veil in the temple were the constellations and the, the sky. And so again, it was symbolically, the heavens were ripped open at the moment Jesus died. And if you remember who was there, the Roman centurion, and he said, surely this was the Son of God. So Mark has paralleled the entire gospel. What Jesus experiences at baptism, he will experience again in the crucifixion. And that's a reminder to us that just as we've been baptized, so too we have a share in the crucifixion of Christ. Paul writes to the Romans and he says, you've been baptized into his death. You know, especially as a young priest, when I'd be doing a baptism of a cute little baby and everyone's happy and we're taking pictures, and I would think to myself, I've just baptized this baby into the death of Christ. But we know, I certainly know now many years later, there can be no resurrection without a death. And Jesus took our place on the cross as well. He offered himself as the sacrificial lamb so that we could be saved, we could live eternally, and it was all for us. But for those who follow him, we too have to walk the way of the cross. We have to embrace our own suffering. And so just as we remember who our father is and who our brother is, we should also embrace the cross, embrace suffering. For Christians, no matter what we have to endure, if we can offer it up to God, the Lord makes it redemptive. We share in the redemptive suffering work and death of Christ. And the more we do that, the more we'll share in his glory. Finally, Mark has a favorite word. We'll see it in his gospel again and again and again. It's immediately. When you read Mark's gospel, especially you can do it in one sitting because it's very short. Jesus immediately did that. He immediately does this. He immediately goes and does. He immediately does this. I think that's a good reminder for us that when we feel an inspiration from the Holy Spirit, when we feel a prompting to do a good work, to go to confession, to stop and say a prayer because that person just came into our mind, we should immediately do it. Watch over the coming year as we hear the gospel, how often we'll hear immediately. We too should do things immediately. Why? Because that's what God wants. And that's what St. John said in the second reading. 
Once we know we're loved, once we know we're adopted sons and daughters of God, we're going to want to please our Father. And what does God want? He wants us to listen to the Spirit, to be prompt in obeying. He wants us to keep the commandments. He wants us to know that there's no reason to fear. The victory has already been won. And so let's, as we continue our Eucharist now, thank God for the gift of baptism, for all that that entails. Let's thank God, too, for the gift of the crucifixion, for the gift of the way of the cross, because it's the only way we can pass from this life into the next. And when we do pass into the next life, it'll be glorious, more than we can ever imagine. And so no matter what we have to endure or go through in the meantime, we need to be faithful, we need to be joyful, keep smiling, and we need to cling to God, knowing that like a child, there's no safer place than to run into the arms of your father and there be protected. And so let us stand and together profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We put our trust in God our Father as we now present the Lord with our needs. The response is, Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. For all who minister to the people of God, strengthened by the grace of their baptism, may they guide others to the light of Christ through their words and actions. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus Savior, Savior, hear our prayer. For our country, may it be a place of peace and unity. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. For communities around the world that suffer from natural disasters, droughts, or a lack of clean and safe drinking water, may they find solutions to aid in their needs, which provide long-lasting resources for their people. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. For those who are incarcerated, may they know the support for, of a forgiving and loving community, and may they receive light and guidance through the words of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. For those who have strayed from the church, may they receive conversion of heart and find joy in the welcoming arms of the Father. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. For all Christians, may we live out our baptismal call by defending life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. For Bishop Michael Fisher, as he prepares to be installed as the 15th Bishop of Buffalo, may he be guided by the Holy Spirit and warmly welcomed by the faithful of Western New York as our shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, especially Ray Novak Jr., Al Donis, Andre, Andrea McIntyre, Patricia Messina, Norman Gee, father of Margaret Trill, Lou Hermisk, brother of Alice Bayak, and all those on our parish prayer list. May they find comfort and peace in knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. For those who have recently died, especially Jeffrey Nogauer, Jr., Kim Mazur, and for Anne-Marie 
Mercurio, who is remembered at today's liturgy. May they be welcomed into the banquet of heaven. For the prayers we lift to the, I'm sorry, Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. For the prayers we lift to the Father in silence. May they be fulfilled according to law. God's divine and holy will. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. Loving Father, please hear and answer our every prayer, the few we have voiced, the many more in our heart, all in keeping with your holy will. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Jesus, Savior. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you, Father. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. silent 
We pray an act of spiritual communion with those who are with us but could not receive. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, proclaiming the gospel message of peace and hope. Thanks be to God. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare him too. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy.